What is going on guys? Welcome back to another video and today we're doing my second mock draft of the year for the 2018 NFL Draft. Uh, like I said, this is my second mock draft of the year. So um, this one's my first with the trade. So this is my first trade uh, mock draft ever, mock draft with trade. Uh, so let me know how you guys like it, if you guys like it, if you guys don't like it, if you guys want me to go back to just a regular draft order or include more trades in it. So um you know i could definitely do that if you guys want to so uh, the like goal for this video is 40 likes if we can hit that uh I, that would be greatly appreciated it helps me out a lot and uh let's get right into this mock draft so number one overall i've got sam donald of course going number one uh to cleveland out of usc um it's debatable whether you want josh allen or sam donald there i don't think josh rosen will get there just because of the whole dilemma with him and Cleveland so uh, between him and Josh Allen is pretty much uh, you know the quarterbacks I think would go number one but there's still a possibility Saquon goes number one hopefully not but there's still that possibility moving on to the New York Giants I have them selecting Saquon Barkley running back out of Penn State this is an obvious decision I know Bradley Chubb recently broke out as be, being a potential draft pick of the New York Giants, I just don't see it happening. I don't think defensive end is that much of a need at number two to go ahead and go after, you know, uh, a defensive end that doesn't fit a 3-4 scheme. Uh, Bradley Chubb, I thought, you know, he does fit. I mean, I think he could play it uh, at, at defensive end. He would just need to add a little bit more weight. Um, but he could definitely play 3-4 outside linebacker, and we don't need a 3-4 outside linebacker right now. Uh, not that high, I mean. It's not that much of a huge need because we just got our guy. Kareem Hunt um, so we do need another linebacker but anyway uh, moving on I think Saquon Barkley is the pick here you know there are a lot of talks about us going quarterback it's just not worth it right now it, it, it's just not worth it so uh, moving on the New York Jets after them trading up to the number three spots they get they get Josh Rosen quarterback out of UCLA I think this is a perfect fit for them uh, I know there are some controversy of him you know fitting the New York media uh, but he, he he's a he's a gritty quarterback with an attitude I mean that's that's what you want man that's what you want you want a tough quarterback uh, that's not very soft and you know can take can take you know can talk to talk and walk to walk so um, I like Josh Rosen I'm sure uh, Jet Central would appreciate that that's his favorite quarterback in this draft and I have Josh Rosen and going to the Jets. Cleveland at number four. I had them selecting Minka Fitzpatrick. Now they can go Bradley Chubb here. Just think of a team with uh, Miles Garrett and Bradley Chubb. That would be an insane duo. I mean, it's insane. And people are saying Bradley Chubb might be better than Miles Garrett. I don't know about that. Um, but think about them on the same team. That would be insane because Cleveland just need Cleveland needs a, another pass rusher. If they go best player available, Bradley Chubb is the guy. But they, if they go best player, you know that fits their need. Minka Fitzpatrick is their guy because their secondary is looking pretty weak right now. And on a defense that ranked just above average last year, you know um, you, you you can imagine if you just add a great defensive back in there, um, you know to play the backfield in the defense that how how great their defense could become now that they got a you know a key guy uh, in the back of that defense so Minka Fitzpatrick is your guy he could play nickel he could play safety he could play corner uh, you know he's that Tyrant Matthew for you so moving on we've got the uh, Denver Broncos at number five now a lot of people are saying they might trade down I think it's a very good possibility they trade down and go ahead and get themselves a tackle but in this situation I had them getting the best offensive lineman in this draft and that is Nelson uh, that is Quentin Nelson guard out of Notre Dame this guy's an absolute monster if Saquon Barkley goes number one I am so high on Quentin Nelson that I will draft him with the number two spot a guard at number two I would definitely do that and don't even worry about trading down because I know somebody might trade up to get him so um you know I, at number two if Saquon Barkley's already chosen for the Giants uh, I would love Quentin Nelson I think he's worth it so um, moving on, uh, Denver definitely needs it as well. Moving on, Indianapolis at number six. They trade down from three to six, as you guys know, and they still get their guy, Bradley Chubb. They're in desperate need of a pass rusher. They haven't had one in a couple of years. It's been a long time since they had a key pad, like since Robert Mathis, really. Um, who else really stepped in there? Trent Cole for a little bit. But, um, you know, that's pretty much it. They, they've had it, they haven't had a, you know, um, a top-notch pass rusher there in quite a while so they get one here in Bradley Chubb uh, I think he'll pretty much play linebacker for you outside linebacker for you 
uh, in, in a pass uh, as a pass rusher. I don't think, like I said, I don't know if he fits that 3-4 defensive end mold yet. Uh, 270 is just a little underweight to, to be a 3-4 defensive end, but um, we'll see what happens with Bradley Chubb, because I'm pretty sure he might be going to a 3-4, so whatever team he goes to. So uh, Buffalo at number 7, I have them trading up. You know, it, it's usually Tampa at number 7, but I have Buffalo trading up to the 7th spot, uh, so Tampa will get uh, their 12th overall pick, and then Buffalo's 53rd second round pick. So uh, I did all this in a, in a draft chart, a draft trade chart. So um, all this is very realistic. The the trade uh, value and stuff like that is very realistic. So um, Buffalo just needs to give up their second round pick, 53rd overall, to get their quarterback of the future. And that's Josh Allen, quarterback out of Wyoming. Now, I know uh, the Bills got A.J. McCarron, and he might be competing for the spot along with uh, I think do they did they add another quarterback over there? I can't remember. Um, I'm not sure if they added another quarterback, but they'll definitely be competing with uh, Josh Allen. But the thing is with Josh Allen, I think he needs someone to sit behind for at least a year. I mean, um, you know, something like a Pat Mahomes situation where they're quite there, but I think they need to sit behind somebody uh, for at least a year. Um, I think he needs a lot of polishing and you know he is worth drafting very high in this draft because of his potential if you have the right coaching staff the right uh, you know um, quarterback gurus out there uh, in your coaching staff then you definitely could develop Josh Allen into a top-notch quarterback in this league but you know, I mean if you don't have much experience you don't have much mentors for him uh, you know he might not pan out so um, there's 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 the possibility there but Buffalo um, you know they've haven't they haven't had their way with quarterbacks so but still they still get their guy here Josh Allen uh, hopefully he turns out for the Bills. The Bills are a quarterback away from really going far in the playoffs. They have they have a decent roster. Um, so Josh Allen to the Buffalo Bills with the eighth overall selection. I have the Chicago Bears selecting Denzel Ward, cornerback out of Ohio State. Now, I know they have Kyle Fuller, who they got, I believe they got on the franchise tag. Oh, no, not the franchise tag. They had him on an unrestricted, um, on a tender or something like that. Green Bay tried to match their tender. Now, Kyle Fuller is making, I don't know how, he's making a lot of money. But, um, you know, he's staying there. They re-signed Prince of Mukamara. Uh, they need somebody in the slot. Denzel Ward could be that guy in the slot. And eventually, you know, he can move out to, to be their number one cornerback uh, as time goes on. So, uh, Denzel Ward, definitely... Um, worth and nobody really talks about him as much in these draft talks but um he's a very decent corner uh, he's right up there with Mike Hughes I think Mike Hughes is just I honestly think Mike Hughes is my favorite quarterback in this draft a cornerback in this draft I think he's the best cornerback in this draft but I'm just going by you know rankings and stuff like that so uh, Denzel Ward cornerback to Chicago uh, they could go Rokon Smith or Tremaine Edmonds here but I haven't taken a corner in this situation uh, with the number nine overall selection, San Francisco is on the clock, but they decided to trade down with their division rivals. Um, that is the Arizona Cardinals. Arizona moves up to the number nine spot. Um, you know, there are some guys out there that, that San Francisco was looking for, like a, a Bradley Chubb, uh, like a Denzel Ward as well. Um, you know, they could use a Minka Fitzpatrick. So they decided to trade down in this situation uh, with the Arizona Cardinals. They acquire uh, Arizona's second round pick. Pick, the 47th overall and they also overpaid a little bit Arizona overpaid a little bit because they are division rivals so they needed to um, you know talk with their um, with their draft currency uh, and they also award San Francisco with a uh, the fifth their fifth round pick 152nd overall so they overpaid a little bit but it is to uh, grab themselves the future quarterback of their franchise and that's Baker Mayfield quarterback out of Oklahoma so Arizona goes ahead and um, goes up some draft spots you know there are some talks that Miami is interested in the quarterback um, you know they might move on from Ryan Tannehill uh, there's there's interest with the uh, Washington Redskins as well and then you got the Chargers all the way at 17 who have a possibility of trading up if they need if they find a quarterback that they really want out there um, so there is the risk of that so Arizona doesn't take any chances and they go ahead and move up into the top 10 and grab their quarterback of the future and so at number 10 the Oakland Raiders now they need cornerback help I get that um, there's Mike Hughes out there they could choose Mike Hughes um, I think it's it's worthy in this situation but in this draft in this mock draft I haven't taken Roquan Smith they needed a middle linebacker for a long time now um, so 
um, they finally get their guy here, Roquan Smith, who can be a, a pretty good 4-3 middle linebacker. I know people, a lot of people are saying he's a little undersized to be a 4-3 middle linebacker, but I think I think he'll be just fine there. I think I think I know he fits in outside linebacker role, but you put him anywhere in the 4-3, I think he'll thrive. So uh, there's that. I know uh, Oakland runs a hybrid 4-3-3-4. I get that. But, you know, you know what I'm saying there. So, uh, Miami, with the 11th overall pick, I had them selecting Tremaine Edmonds, linebacker out of Virginia Tech. Now, Tremaine Edmonds isn't my favorite guy in this draft. I actually, I'm not too fond of Tremaine Edmonds. I think all the potential is there. He's very quick. Um, I think his instincts are lacking. I think his strength is lacking. He really can beat people at the line of scrimmage, you know, trying to, uh, uh, you know, get a pass rush going in between the tackles. I know he's a good edge rusher. Um, he'll be good in a 3-4. I know Miami also does a 4-3-3-4 hybrid sort of thing. So I think he'll, he'll thrive there. I just think you need a, 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 a coaching staff that knows how to coach linebackers. I think he'll be just fine. Uh, but right out the gate, I'm not the biggest fan of Tremaine Edmonds, but uh, I have him going to Miami. Miami here. So with the number 12th overall pick, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are on the clock and they select. I had them at first taking Marcus Davenport, um, but um, you know, being that they got JPP and Vinnie Curry, they could go in the Philadelphia Eagles direction, right? Um, you know, um, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers are, were struggling in pass rush last year, but they got Vinnie Curry. They got um, they got JPP. They could get Marcus Davenport like Philadelphia last year with the 14th overall selection. You know, uh, they had Brandon Graham and they had uh, Chris Long and they had other defensive ends, right? Uh, but they still drafted Derek Barnett and Derek Barnett as a rotational defensive end had himself six sacks on the year. So um, that's, that's just a great coaching move there. But I think they just go after a position of need. They're surprised this player uh, fell this far in the draft and that's Derwin James, safety out of FSU. Uh, I know they got Chris Conti out there and some other guy uh, uh justin evans who they drafted last year in the third round but they need someone to pair him up with uh i know chris conti's all right but come on now unless unless chris conti's still on the team i think he's on the team still but anyway they need a safety right so david uh, derwin james stays in florida uh and he goes to fsu i mean he goes to tampa bay out of S fsu so moving on with the 13th overall selection washington is on the clock and they get somebody they needed for a while they need somebody in that front three a big nose tackle in that three four they don't have a nose tackle and they are they run the three four that's just a huge problem so they get their guy in vita vea defensive tackle nose tackle out of washington a huge player uh, in my opinion you know a spitting image of uh, alumni of, of washington as well uh, Danny Shelton so uh, Vita Vea great pickup for the Washington Redskins should they go that direction uh, and with the 14th overall selection Green Bay selects uh, Mike Hughes cornerback out of UCF uh, they could go Marcus Davenport as well but they have a glaring need at cornerback I mean it's bad they've had they haven't had some great cornerbacks get come there in a while they need they've been struggling in the secondary for a long time their safeties have been decent I mean haha -ha Clinton Dix Pro Bowl, um, Pro Bowl safety, very good. Uh, I think Bur Morgan Burnett's still there. They're fine at safety. Uh, they definitely need pass rushes, but they still have some guys there. Um, you know, they 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 got um, Clay Matthews is still there. He's all right. Uh, but then you got uh, Mo Wilkerson, who's, who's coming in at that three four defensive end spot. So their front seven. Uh, it's not completely damaged yet, right? So um, and they got Mike Daniels as well. So. It's not completely damaged yet, but their cornerback core is bad, and Mike Hughes will be there to save the day, uh, cornerback out of UCF. With the 15th overall selection, the San Francisco 49ers select their number one wide receiver of the future, Calvin Ridley, wide receiver out of Alabama. Now, nobody talks about this, but San Francisco has a big need at wide receiver. I know uh, San Francisco needs to fix their defense a little bit, especially in the back end. Uh, sure, they can they can use a little bit more guys uh, in the front seven, but they they've gone they've gone in the draft too many times in the front seven. I mean, it's three straight years drafting a defensive end. Um, you know, you shouldn't do it again. I know, I know it's probably the right move to do, but you shouldn't do it again. Um, you need safeties, you need cornerbacks, um, um, but come on now. I mean, you, I mean, you need all that, but their their defense is decent, right? Um, but their offense could could need uh, could use some help, right? Uh, Pierre Garcon is their number one wide receiver right now. He's getting older. How much longer is he going to be there? You got Marcus Goodwin, who's only good for running in a straight line and catching the ball. Uh, then you really just got some 
nobodies uh, in that um, wide receiver core. And, you know, Jeremy Curley isn't there, I don't believe, anymore. You got Aaron Burbridge, who I don't know what happened to him, um, but he was he was pretty good coming out of Michigan State. But really, I don't think did anything with you guys at San Francisco. So you need a number one, number one wide receiver for your super highly paid quarterback in Jimmy Garoppolo. So uh, go ahead and get yourself a target there in Calvin Ridley wide receiver out of Alabama with the 16th over, uh, overall selection Baltimore gets their future pass rusher to replace T sizzle and that's Marcus Davenport linebacker slash defensive end out of UTSA I think he'll be a great 3-4 outside linebacker he's very quick can stop the run can pass rush I mean he could be the number one defensive end in any other draft uh, but just Bradley Chubb is the guy in this draft but he could be the number one defensive end or number one pass rusher in any other draft in the past couple drafts but besides Miles Garrett of course but um yeah Marcus Davenport to the Baltimore Ravens with the 17th overall selection, I had the Los Angeles Chargers selecting. Now, I know they need a, a defensive tackle. I get that. Uh, but I think they get their future quarterback here in Lamar Jackson. Um, they didn't have to trade up for him. So, I might as well just grab him up here. Have him compete with Cardale Jones for the uh, you know, back of quarterback, quarterback spot. I don't think Card Cardale Jones is the future of your franchise. And I think uh, Lamar Jackson to the uh, Chargers should be in a thought at least for the Chargers moving on in the future. So, moving on with the 18th overall selection, Seattle. I mean, I had this in my last last mock draft, but after Richard Sherman's departure, you need a cornerback. Deshaun Shedd, Jeremy Lane, Richard, uh, um, Richard Sherman. That is three of your top cornerbacks gone. You have no cornerbacks on that roster. You have, uh, what's his name, uh, Shaquem Griffin. Uh, no, that's the brother. Uh, I don't know what's his, I don't know what the, what the older brother's name is, but He's on the team right now, and that's pretty much your best cornerback, right? So you need a cornerback. Josh Jackson is a human highlight reel. This guy is just a complete ball hawk. Go ahead and add him on that secondary, and he'll pay dividends. Moving on to the Dallas Cowboys at 19. I had them selecting Deron Payne, defensive tackle out of Alabama. They're in desperate need of uh, some linemen, some defensive linemen. Deron Payne is your guy who can stop the run and uh, rush the passer as well from the interior. So great pickup there for Dallas. With the 20th overall selection, I have the Detroit Lions reaching just a little bit, but they get a running back who they desperately needed. They haven't had a 100-yard rusher in, since Reggie Bush in 2013. So, you know, your your super high, highly paid um, Matthew Stafford, our quarterback, hasn't had a run game since 2013. He can't keep passing for over 4,000 yards, 5,000 yards every season. You're just not going to win that way. Um, so you need a running game. Give him a running game. I know uh, you would believe in Amir Abdullah. You believe in LeGarrette Blunt, but it's just not enough. You need somebody there to, to, to be your 1,000-yard rusher, and that is is Darius Geis running back out of LSU. I think he's a first-round talent. I had not much people talk about him going in the mid-first round. This is mid to late first round. I, I've seen a lot of people have Eagle, the Eagles taking him at the end of the first, but I think he's first-round talent, so go ahead and pick him here. I know he's a little bit of a reach, but Detroit desperately needs uh, running back, and they need they need a pass rusher as well, but there, there are pass rushers in, in this draft that you can grab up. Uh, Darius Geis is another guy that I, I just really like coming into this draft, and I think he separates himself from the other guys. So, moving on, uh, I have the, the Cincinnati Bengals selecting Rashawn Evans inside linebacker out of Alabama. I know uh, Leighton Vander Esch has climbed up draft boards, but I think um, Cincinnati goes with a safer pick here and goes with the guy that everybody's been talking about for a while now, uh, not just, you know, scouting combine, um, you know, player who just rose in the scouting combine so uh, they go after Rashawn Evans inside linebacker out of Alabama and with Buffalo's 22nd pick their second pick of the first draft uh, of the first round they select Connor Williams out uh, offensive tackle out of Texas they just traded Cordy Glenn you've got Deion Dawkins there who you drafted last year but is he your guy at left tackle I say just have them compete Connor Williams and Deion Dawkins, whoever loses the left tackle spot can just go to right tackle. It's a win-win situation for you guys, and you guys solidify that offensive line for whoever quarterback is coming in to your facility, whether that be Josh Allen or they stay with A.J. McCarron and so on and so forth. They moved up in this draft for a reason. I'm sure it's for a quarterback, so uh, we'll see what happens there, but you got to sure up that offensive line first. 
Moving on to the Carolina Panthers. They select Cortland Sutton wide receiver out of SMU. They don't have any wide receivers on their roster. I think their best wide receiver right now. Um, who is their best wide receiver right now? I don't know. Uh, but... You know, you got Christian McCaffrey there as well. I mean, if, if you want to consider him a wide receiver or a running back. Uh, so, um, they, they got that guy out of Michigan um, who, who was like a tight end wide receiver hybrid. His name escapes me right now. I used to know his name. Don't trust me. But uh, they need a wide, number one wide receiver, right? This guy, Corlin Sutton, reminds you of the uh, the old Des Bryant. Just the huge, fast, um, you know, Des Bryant. But he really reminds me, Corlin Sutton really reminds me as the number one wide receiver last year in Corey Davis who is a big wide receiver with some decent hands uh, but what I really noticed in those two comparing them is their ability to run after the catch the the yards after they make the catch is insane what they can do after they make the catch how they make their moves being a big body like that it's hard to do that and um, you know I, I definitely compare Cortland Sutton to Corey Davis so um, definitely a steal here at the late uh, first round. Cortland Sutton to the Carolina Panthers. The Tennessee Titans, who doesn't have Harold Landry going to the Tennessee Titans, right? I mean, who doesn't? Anyway, moving on to the Atlanta. The Falcons selecting Isaiah Wynn, offensive guard out of Georgia. Now, I'm hoping, I'm hoping Isaiah Wynn falls to the second round. I hope, um, I hope uh, Will Hernandez gets chosen somewhere. Um, I don't have, do I have, oh yeah, I, my bad guys, I skipped uh, the, the Rams, I had the Rams taking Will Hernandez guard out of UTEP, uh, but I hope Isaiah Wynn falls to the second round so the Giants could pick him up, I think I'll be a steal in the second round, but I have Atlanta taking Isaiah Wynn with the 26 overall selection, offensive guard out of Georgia, he stays in, uh, in his home state. Uh, with the 28th overall selection, the Pittsburgh Steelers, like I said, I have this as a match made in heaven. Mason Rudolph to the Pittsburgh Steelers. I know it's a little bit of a reach, but I don't think Mason Rudolph will be there in the late second round. Uh, so I think he will be chosen in the you know early, early second. So just take a little reach here for your quarterback of the future. Josh Dobbs is not the guy. Mason Rudolph, I mean, who else can you compare him to uh, in the NFL right now than Ben Roethlisberger? And Ben Roethlisberger is going to retire any minute now. So you need your guy to be ready. I mean, Mason Rudolph, the, it's not one of those situations where you get, um, you know, a, a mobile quarterback or something like that, and you have to have him learn under a, a pocket passer. It's not like that whatsoever. You have a huge pocket pass, uh, pa pocket passer uh, quarterback with a huge arm in uh, Ben Roethlisberger, and you got his, you know, his little uh, twin or his little brother there in Mason Rudolph, who's almost the same thing. Mason Rudolph has a huge arm, uh, and he's a huge quarterback, so uh, definitely can learn some fundamentals, definitely can learn how to play in this league as a big quarterback uh, under Ben Roethlisberger. So Mason Rudolph to the Pittsburgh Steelers. The Jacksonville Jaguars, you know, after letting go of Allen Robinson, he goes to Chicago. After letting go of Allen Hearns, he goes to Dallas. Uh, the Jacksonville Jaguars are in need of a wide receiver. They've got D.D. Westbrook there, but you, you need someone to pair him up with, and that is Christian Kirk, Texas a uh, wide receiver out of Texas A&M, uh, with the 30, 30th overall selection. Minnesota, I have them selecting Mike McGlitchy, offensive tackle out of Notre Dame. They need another uh, offensive tackle for that right tackle spot, and they get one here. The New England Patriots, out of, after letting go of Nate Solder, letting him go to the New York Giants, uh, the, you know, there's a spot there at left tackle. Le Le Adrian Waddle right now is in competition to be the left tackle, along with Marcus Cannon. So that's not a very good competition there for left tackle. So you want to get another guy. Let's get the combine star, Colton, Colton Miller, offensive tackle out of UCLA. And he will compete for that left tackle spot. They have a whole lot cornerback, but there's cornerbacks all over this draft. You can find one really pretty much from the first to fifth round and probably find yourself a good starter. So... Um, you know, New England doesn't have to worry about that too much. Plus, they got Stephon Gilmore, Jason McCourty there. So you you guys have a little bit of uh, a little bit of talent there at that cornerback position. So, uh, and then 
uh, with the Philadelphia Eagles at the 32, a uh, 32nd overall pick. They select DJ Moore, wide receiver out of Maryland. Uh, he's another guy that just came up out of nowhere after the combine, had himself a great combine. Uh, I watched his film and it's pretty good. I uh, didn't really notice him before that. I didn't really hear his name before that, but I'm glad I did. Uh, DJ Moore to the Philadelphia Eagles. They need a wide receiver. Um, and Alshon Jeffrey is not your true number one, so you just need to, you need to match him up with somebody else. Mike Wallace is there. Okay. Uh, Nelson Aguilar is actually a pretty good slot receiver. Turned out to be a good uh, slot receiver for you guys. So uh, you guys just need more wide receiver help. That's all. Uh, you guys could go linebacker, right? Um, uh, and I'm sorry, did I miss another uh, pick here? 27 New Orleans selects uh, Leighton Vander Esch. So, sorry. Like, they could go linebacker here, Philadelphia. They could go linebacker, could go tackle, could go cornerback, could go tight end. But I have them go going wide receiver here. So, that's all I got for you guys. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. Uh, I know I skipped through some picks by accident, but I made up for that. Le uh, Leighton Vander Esch to New Orleans. And I have. Uh, who else did I forget on? Uh, uh, Los Angeles Rams getting Will Hernandez. So I know it's a long video. Hope you guys stuck with me the whole way. Let me know if you guys did stick with me the whole way. And uh, comment who your favorite team is and who do you want them to draft. And uh, yeah, let me know if you like this mock draft. And right, I'll see you guys in the next video.